Hi, welcome to Connected Classrooms, a global conversation on gun violence. My name is David Gager, a facilitator with Global Nomads Group, a nonprofit organization that aims to foster dialogue and understanding among our world's youth. In commemoration of the Sandy Hook School shooting in Newtown, Connecticut, we have a truly unique program for all of you today. We have schools connecting from the United States, Somalia, Pakistan, and all across online. We're here to discuss the impacts and potential responses to gun violence, both in our local and global communities. Over the recent years, wow. gun, vi over the recent years gun violence, a global conversation on gun violence, has had a major, My name is has, major a facilitator. Sorry, over violence. the recent years, gun violence has consistently made its way across international headlines. At first glance, the major news stories would imply that these schools we are talking with today have vastly different experiences. According to the United Nations, Somalia has hundreds of child soldiers, as young as age nine. Yet, only 9.1 out of 100 Somali citizens own a gun. On the other hand, Pakistan has one of the highest gun ownership rates in the world, six highest out of 178 countries. Furthermore, the United States has the highest gun ownership rate in the entire world, with 88.1 out of 100 citizens in the United States owning a gun. But statistics and headlines, they only tell part of the story. We are here today because we want to develop a fuller understanding of the impacts of gun violence and the ways in which our communities can deal with this critical issue. I'm very pleased to hand over our introductions to our four participating schools. We have Talwat High School, Somalia Youth Leadership Initiative, Peace in Pakistan, as well as Roycey Ketchum. So let's kick it off with Talwood. If we could have one representative from Talwood to introduce yourselves, where you're coming from, and an interesting fact about your community, that would be great. Thanks so much. Good morning. I'm Derek Bradford from Tallwood High School. We are the home of the Global Studies and World Languages Academy. And one interesting fact about our city is that it has one of the largest rec recreational beaches in the entire world. And it's also next door to the US Navy's largest Navy base in the world. Thank you. over to Somalia Youth Leadership Institute. Please share a little bit about yourselves and where you're coming from. Thanks so much. We are volunteers from uh, different schools. We would like to present our country, Somalia. And uh, my name is Susie. And this lady called uh, Nimro, Raha, Ahmed and Ali. Um, the interest uh, thing in Somalia is uh, the many sources. We are we have like uh, many sources which are like uh, light stores and things like that. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks so much. Let's move back over to the United States with Roy C. Ketchum. If we could have a representative introduce yourselves, your community, and something interesting about, about where you're coming from. Thanks so much. Hi, my name is Aja Badai, and I uh, live in Wapter Falls. Uh, we all attend Royce Ketchum High School. We're a train ride north from New York City and about 45 minutes away from the Sandy Hook um, School. Uh, we live in the beautiful Hudson Valley, and um, we all attend, we all attend the school and participate in after school programs as well as other um, activities in our community. Thank you. Fantastic. Thanks so much. And last but not least, let's move over to Peace. Um, and if you could have a representative introduce your group and share an interesting fact about where you're coming from, that would be wonderful. Thanks so much. Hello, it's me, Kushbu. I'm from Pakistan. 
And as being a volunteer of peace, I want to introduce my organization on this uh, platform of, of this video conference. The vision of peace is a discrimination free, just society for all, where peace is culture and education is tool for empowerment. As being a volunteer, I'm very much glad to uh, in participating in this video conference. Peace has actively participated in every opportunity and it involves its volunteer in every opportunity, either it is at a social forum or at the international forum. Peace has actively participated in raising awareness about women rights and human rights. It raised awareness among students of schools, colleges and universities in different areas. It also raised awareness about the women rights and it works hard to enrise the status and dignity of women in society. It is also connected with a project which is Weekend and Violence Against Women. And that along with Peace and Weekend and Violence Against Women, they both together work uh, hard and actively to, to remove all the torture that have been, uh, that have been happening on the women. And Peace also involves encourage and foster the mind of youth to discuss on social forums, on interfaith harmony, faith X, and solidarity X, on uh, social forums. And peace also runs schools in privileged and unprivileged areas to remove the barriers. You know, the students of village are really compassionate for getting education. And peace hopes that if they will, if they will provide education to the to the students of town, they, they can be a good public speaker and they can easily communicate on global dialogues and one day they will show a clear difference in their unprivileged community. And what I like about my community, I belong to a multicultural faith community. And what I like about my community is that everyone has different faith and their own religion, but even they give priority to the humanity because they believe that humanity is the biggest religion than every religion of the world and when it comes to the term of celebration they all gather together and celebrate every festival with great happiness thank you thanks so much peace in pakistan we're already touching on so many different elements of where we're coming from and where we're going with this really critical issue and what work we're doing. So I appreciate everyone's excitement. Thank you for those introductions. And remember, for those of you joining online, we'd love to hear what you're working on and where you're coming from. So please don't hesitate to introduce yourselves in the Q&A chat box and throughout this conversation, putting in your questions and comments. So let's dive in. Adults have historically dominated this conversation around gun violence, whether it's government officials or security forces or even policymakers. This is an incredible opportunity for youth to step up and have a larger voice in this really important conversation. So let's kick it off with Tallwood. I was curious if you'd share a little bit more about what is what are the, some of the conversations happening around gun ownership in your community, and what are some of your, of your personal experiences with gun violence? Thanks so much, Tallwood. Hello, my name is Isela Vasquez from Tallwood High School. Um, the discussion in our community about gun violence is there is an argument here in the U.S. and in that whether there should be more restrictions put on gun ownership. One personal experience I have is that I had a teacher that was killed when I lived in Northern Virginia, which is by Washington, D.C., the capital of the United States. Um, personal experiences like this can also uh, cause people to, cut, to choose sides between whether there should or should not be restrictions put or more restrictions put on gun control. Hi, my name's Bella Blackney. Um, my personal experience with uh, gun violence is actually one, uh, a story from my mom. Um, when she was 17, she was taken by some men and bad things happened, but the reason she is alive today and that I'm alive today is because she was able 
to call her father to come save her, and he had a gun. And so I think personal experiences, like Gisela said, definitely impact how you feel about gun violence, gun control, and whether or not you feel supportive of it or if you would like it to be more controlled. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your personal experiences and the courage to, to talk about personal experiences and how that relates to our conversation. Um, it's a really critical piece both um, in our local communities and our global communities and how we're navigating this conversation. I wanted to get a little more, um, a little more from Peace in Pakistan and I could hear from one or two representatives from Peace in Pakistan around what is your conversation around gun ownership in your community and what are some of your personal experiences with gun violence. Thanks so much. Hi, this is Shaira Khalid from Peace Pakistan and the personal experience we had have in our community or country is that we always listen on television or on newspapers or we hear from our community members that someone's killed by gun violence or someone has been robbed, his bike is robbed or his money has been snatched. So these kinds of things keep happening in our society and like you would have heard that in Karachi there are there are street crime is, is is very effective and the gun ownership in Pakistan I think it is unstoppable because the the guns are being imported from other countries and they are not on record and so anyone can buy guns in the from the northern and tribal areas of Pakistan in cheap prices and many people get guns from tribal areas to our our community and they play with it. In, in, wedding, in wedding ceremonies or in other occasions or in elections. So I think the gun ownership in Pakistan is getting ridiculously improve, improvement and I think it is unstoppable. Thank you. Hi, I'm Khushbu again and I'm from Pakistan. And I would like to add on that gun violence is also very much common in Pakistan. And as uh, my father said, that it is very much common. People use firearms in many occasions. And I want to note here that in on the occasions of wedding elections and on the birth of male child, especially in KPK or Pakhtunkhwa, which is province of Pakistan, aerial firing with jams, bomb, paint guns, and firearms and uh, AK 47s is very common. And they use it, they take a fun and it seems as a prop to them. And the people of Khaibakhtunkhwa are really fond and loving to wear a rifle or at least having a gun or firearm in their pocket. And I want to add on that the, the way the people of KPK wear guns is same like as the people of London carries umbrella. So I think now you can assess that how much gun violence is common in Pakistan and especially the women from unprivileged areas are being victims of gun violence. We have a great example of Malara Yusufzai. And Malara Yusufzai belonged to an unprivileged area of Pakistan. She belonged to Sabah and she was shot with a bullet in her head just because she demanded for the education of girls. We have another example of Benazir Bhutto. While she was addressing in Rawalpindi, she was shot with a bullet. She, uh, she worked hard to give equal rights to women and she worked hard, especially for the people of Pakistan, to give them truly independence, but she became the victim of gun violence. So I think gun violence is really much common and there is no one record of that. And when the government arranged a camp where people can, uh, where people can submit their guns, which have not a license, but they didn't got enough record, which was truly. And I want to appreciate the U.S. as they have a campaign of gun by big campaigns, and the government of Pakistan also organized that campaign, that it was not truly practiced. And Pakistan, the government of Pakistan has also featured and introduced many policies for gun violence, but the laws and the, the laws are weak and unpracticed in Pakistan. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, that was really wonderful and in-depth and I think really brought the conversation 
um, in a really interesting way from Talwood talking about really personal experiences and how we see it every day right in front of our faces to some of the global issues around how guns are being traded between countries, violence against women specifically in Pakistan, and some of the larger issues that might sometimes, as you mentioned, feel unstoppable. Um, but we're going to keep diving in and see what are some of the other experiences like with gun ownership and gun violence. And I want to toss it back to the United States with Roy C. Ketchum. And I'd love to hear from one or two representatives from your school about what is the conversation like around gun ownership in your community? And what are some personal experiences you have with gun violence? Thanks so much. Hi, I'm Gabrielle Nassi. Um, in New York State, they're thinking about um, putting more regulations on all the guns, like who can own the guns, how much, how many guns you can have in your household, and how many um, bullets you're allowed to, to buy at once. Um, a kind of personal experience I had was with Sandy Hook a few years ago. Um, I had um, a friend who just moved to Connecticut a few months before that. And as I was watching the news, all I could think about was, oh my gosh, she can be in that school. Her brothers could be in that school. And luck of the thing she wasn't. She was about only 10 minutes away from there. But um, just seeing all the children who were tragically killed, all of them, like, so close to my brother's age, like I could only like feel for the parents, like the pain that the families went through. It was just incredible, and my heart really went out to them with that. I can only picture like what would happen to my family if one of my brothers or both of my brothers were killed in that attack. Thank you. Hello, my name is Fabian Ashley, and um, as I said before, in New York State, they're trying to. They're trying to put um, more restrictions on gun ownership, and my per my personal experience with it is that when I was younger, my dad was shot. But um, when I was younger, I wasn't aware of how easily a person could have a gun. And I feel like around like the whole world, it's the same way that you know, on top of the fact that we're not really protected, that we also aren't aware. So we kind of live in a naive sense of state of mind where we feel like. Not a lot of people have guns. Thank you. Thank you so much. Those are really some wonderful comments and giving us, again, just another look at um, a community and conversations happening around gun ownership and gun violence. I just wanted to take a moment to remind our online audience, everyone, all the schools viewing online and anyone else um, checking in on the Q&A chat box to keep your questions coming and your comments coming as this conversation continues. We'd love to hear from you and get your voice and thoughts on this really, really important conversation. So with that, let's kick it back to Somalia Youth Leadership Institute. Same question. What is the conversations around gun ownership in your communities? And what are some of your personal experiences with gun violence? I'd love to hear from one or two people at Somalia Youth Leadership. Thanks so much. And thank you very much. My name is Abdurrahman. Uh, I'm greeting all the participants and you. And definitely, killing people in Somalia is very easy. It's a very simple action. Every day it happens. Uh, more people are killed in uh, the south central part of Somalia. And Somali people are experienced in seeing killing people, killing people being killed. Uh, every clashes between militias, uh, uh, insurgents, and the governments happen, which people see uh, not people who are dead. So I think it is the most uh, uh, is, is is an area which more people are killed every day uh, by gunfires. Also, explosions, not only gunfires, every day happens. Maybe uh, the, capital, the capital city of Somalia, Mogadishu, is the, is, is the place which more people, around 10 people, are killed every day. 
these actions, whether it's uh, explosion or gunfire, it damages every aspect, every uh, dimension or social uh, social party. It, it damages the economy, the education, the culture also, the health, the religion. It damages and drains the budgets. It destroys the livelihood, resources, uh, causes chronic diseases, uh, and it's really very bad in, uh, in, in Somali culture, but uh, since the Somali central government has collapsed in 1991, these actions, uh, such as killings and explosions, are simply seen uh, and, and are very, uh, and, and, and it's a common thing. So thank you very much. Uh, I would like to include what my uh, friend said. My name is Susdi. And uh, true, there is a lot of gun violence here in Somalia. It's not good, really. And it, is, it seems like arrogant somehow. Because uh, young people are dying because of nothing. Uh, if I include uh, my experience, which I had from the side of the gun violence, like I lost most of my relatives because of gun violence. And uh, really, it hurts a lot when you lose someone who is really very close to you. And uh, I'm sure that one day, I'm sure that one day Somalia will go forward, not the way it seems. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks so much. Um, once again, um, really putting a face and faces and voices to these international headlines that we hear um, in communities in the United States or abroad that are often disconnected from one another and really giving a uh, deeper sense of what's going on in Somalia around gun violence. Thanks so much. And now I wanted to take a moment. We're getting in tons of comments and questions from our online audience. And I wanted to take um, and pose a question to our participating schools that are coming from, that's coming from Nahida, Nahida is calling, uh, is, wrote a question in from Sola School of Leadership in Kabul, Afghanistan. And Nahida asked, what could be the reason for a lot of this gun violence? And I wanted to pose that question first to Peace in Pakistan um, from Nahida from Kabul, Afghanistan. She wrote, what could be the reason for a lot of the gun violence that you're describing in your, in your communities? And I'd love to hear from one or two people at Peace in Pakistan. Thanks so much. Hi, this is Shera again. And I think the reason before the gun violence in Pakistan is mainly poverty and unemployed, unemployment. And I think these are the two major reasons for gun violence because when people don't have money to get me, then and, and they don't have money. They don't have money to get their food, so they try to go to criminal ways. And one other reason is an education, because people don't know the disadvantages of this kind of gun violence in uh, in their country. And unemployment, because when the people don't have employment, they they search for employment in their country, and they don't get jobs, proper jobs, and they have to work hard. And some, sometimes they get. To, they get fed up of their life and they go to criminal ways and to earn money. So I think the main reason is poverty, unemployment, and an education. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much, Peace, uh, peace in Pakistan. Now that we're, at, we're kind of really understanding where we're all coming from in this conversation, some of our personal experiences, our thoughts about the issues facing our country or our local community, I wanted to pose a question to the folks over in Tallwood High School in Virginia. Um, what are some of your impressions around what Peace in Pakistan has been talking about in terms of the issues facing their community? Is, is the conversation something that's familiar and what you and what you imagined, or are some of the pieces that they're talking about really different than what you thought before we have we started this conversation today? I'd love to hear from Talwood about your thoughts on that. Thanks so much. 
Hello, I'm Francesca Bertuccio. Um, I feel like in our community, as uh, Pakistan said, that um, their violence is more towards poverty, but here in the United States, I could say that um, the issue with gun violence is because of our growing generation that is becoming insensitized to the fact that, you know, guns are becoming more common. Our generation is growing with and immune to the fact that guns are becoming everywhere. We're hearing about violence with guns everywhere, and we have video games that are provoked and that are based on violence, as in Call of Duty, um, Black Ops, and you know, kids are playing these games, and eventually they grow up with the knowledge that you know they will be able to use guns, and which is I feel is a problem with media and video games with our growing youth is that we're becoming insensitized to the fact that. You know, guns are becoming more common. Thank you. Oh. Hi, I'm Derek Bradford. I also feel that despite the differences, there are similarities with ourselves in America and in Pakistan as they talk about the access and the easy access to guns. And I feel even in America we have an easy access to getting guns, which if you don't have the guns, you don't have the violence, and that is a big part of the problem. Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, there was some really interesting points that you were bringing out around the relationship of gun violence and poverty, gun violence, and gun ownership. And I wanted to pose the next question to your Amer from Tallwood to your American counterparts over in New York at Royce Ketchum. I'd love to hear from one or two people at Royce Ketchum. Do you think there's a relationship between guns and poverty? And have you had any of these conversations? And what do you feel about what Talib was speaking to about the relationship about guns and poverty being different in Pakistan maybe than in the U.S.? Do you see a relationship? What do you think it is if there is one? Thanks so much. Hi, I'm AJ. Um, I'm from Wabinger Falls, New York. I definitely feel that there's a connection between poverty and gun violence. I feel like when there are people who are in horrible situations, when they have no other options or opportunities to succeed in their society or to like provide for their children or to even just sustain a normal life, they resort to um, a source that to most people is horrible and they would never consider. But in that type of situation, they look for some sort of power as a way to get out of their situation. And I feel like guns have a extremely like appeal to them, like Tallwood said, with the um, video games as well as the in movies, how the appeal makes people look at them with different with a different view instead of being for their purpose, which is violence. So when they look at guns, they see them as appeal and as a way to get out of their situation. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kyle, and I feel that the reason for gun violence has uh, to do with kids growing up playing video games such as, like uh, Talwood said, Call of Duty, Grand Theft Auto. They just have a negative impact on um, kids growing up because psychologically their brain isn't fully developed, and those gun violence can have an impact on them. Also, the internet, if you go on YouTube, you can go YouTube um, videos that you can watch school fights on. You can watch someone getting beat up on, and it just desensitizes our whole society. Thank you. Thanks so much, Royce Ketchum. I now wanted to throw it back over to our peers in Somalia and ask, ask you guys if you had any questions for your peers in the United States, whether it be at Royce Ketchum in New York or at Tallwood, around some of the pieces they're talking about in terms of their impressions of of gun culture and gun violence in the U.S. Do you have any questions for your peers in the U.S.? And I encourage you to, to ask them now, to either Royce Ketchum or Talwood, about what you're hearing about their experiences around gun violence. Thanks, Somalia. Hello, my name is uh, Susie. I would like to ask a question, which is, um, as a Somalia, um, for us, it is like a natural, or maybe I can call it like normal, 
us to have a gun violence and something like that. But like, I would like to ask why, like in America or USA, they have like gun violences. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Would you mind repeating just the end, just the question, so we could hear a little clearer for our peers in the United States to give a response? Thanks so much. Uh, hello, David. Uh, this is Mohammed. Uh, oh. I am just asked that uh, actually it's very normal and understandable for uh, Somali people to carry guns. Because one, number one, uh, they protect themselves, and number two, there is weak government. The government cannot take away the guns from people. So she is uh, asking the U.S. students why U.S. citizens, U.S. people carry guns. We understand U.S. has more powerful government than the rest of the world. So why the citizens need carry guns? Thank you very much. What's the culture? Thanks so much. Um, so Talwood High School, maybe you can respond to that a little bit. From what I heard, they're asking, why is it, what, why is it ingrained in U.S. culture that um, there, the gun ownership is so high and that many people are carrying guns and there's such a, there's such an influence around personal gun ownership in America? I'd love to hear from you over in Talwood. Thanks so much. Uh, when our country began, it was formed with a pen and with lead, and in that I'm saying in our Constitution we wrote with our Second Amendment the right to bear arms and to keep arms in case of our government collapsing. And with this, our country has held steadfast to that and the belief that our country, to maintain the power of the people, we have the right to keep our arms and keep our own guns, and many people use them for hunting out in Midwestern, um, the Midwestern part of the country, and kind of, it keeps us to our roots, and it holds us to what our country started with, and across any country, you're going to have people who are crazy and will use guns in the wrong way, and, and as the saying go, goes, guns don't kill people, people kill people, because you're not going to fire a gun without someone pulling the trigger. Thank you. To Post to Somalia and then to Talia. Great, thanks so much. Um, Thanks so much for giving a kind of a quick history and larger understanding of who's using guns and why and different regions of the United States and their interpretations of the importance of having personal guns and how that relates to gun violence. I wanted to flip back and go to our online audience and take an exciting question that we got in from Kara Roth. Kara Roth, I wanted to pose this question from Kara Roth first to Somalia Youth Leadership Institute. And the question is, do people think the United States needs to be a leader on this issue in terms of policy and legislation? Or are there other countries that the US should learn from in terms of how to reduce gun violence? So Somalia, the question from Kara Roth is saying, are there other countries that the US? Thanks so much. Let me know you guys got that question in from Kara Roth online. Thanks, Somalia. Hello, my name is Mahmoud. Uh, the thing that I'm American is to stop making 
uh, manufacturing the guys because of uh, when they make the guys, so many people use it wrong time to use the guns. So we need to the American people to stop making or manufacturing the guys. Thank you. Um, uh, what Abdurrahman just uh, uh, Mahmoud just said is that yes, uh, we actually uh, seek uh, or want the American government to stop manufacturing guns because you know the guns are being manufactured in the U.S. and brought to the Somalia and Somali people use it to kill each other. So uh, the message we want it uh, to actually uh, reach it out to the U.S. government is to stop or reduce the gun manufacturing. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks so much. I wanted to go over to Talwood and ask one representative your thoughts on do you agree or disagree with the comments from Somalia? Thanks so much. Uh, good morning. Um, here uh, at Tallwood, we feel that America, yes, does manufacture a large amount of arms with companies like Remington, but also many of the newer, more high-tech, automatic repeating rifles are coming out of Russia with the AK-47s and Israel. And Israel and Russia are so vested in the region, we feel that maybe not just the U.S. as a leader, but an international cooperation to change the manufacture, the manufacturing and distribution of weapons will help slow down gun violence because the less weapons that are out there, the less damage that can be done. Thank you. Yes, and i just like to continue off of that. I know that um, sometimes where these guns are being manufactured isn't the problem. I know that in various places in Sub-Saharan Saharan Africa, like through Sudan, um, guns and other weapons are trafficked uh, illegally across borders. And so we need to also maybe have also tighter restrictions on borders to work and work on conflict uh, resolution to help assuage the situations in conflict areas. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And that, now I wanted to go over to our peers at Peace in Pakistan. What are some of your thoughts? Thanks so much. Hi, this is Ali from Peace Pakistan. Uh, yes, uh, it's Somalian fellow says that America is impacting on uh, largely in gun violence. So I think it's I agree with them that uh, America is manufacturing the guns, guns and exporting all over the world. So I think America is uh, impacting on the gun violence. So if we the first step take that uh, we don't export these guns with uh, other countries. So I think these kinds of gun violence should be reduced in all over the world. Thank you. Hi, I'm Taina and I want to add something from the Hassan's. Uh, that uh, I had just advice to America that uh, they don't export and they don't create the guns for and don't export to other countries and it will not happen uh, gun violence. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is a great conversation. I'm really diving into both local and global issues that are affecting our, our communities and our relationships with one another, whether it's the United States relationship with other countries or other pieces of the puzzle, whether it's women's violence, poverty. There's some really wonderful, there's some really wonderful things. And I, again, I want to remind the audience as we keep moving along, please 
please keep posting your comments and thoughts online in the Q&A chat box. We'd love to hear from you, your input, your thoughts, questions you may have for our, our participating schools. With that, I wanted to kind of transition, and we're speaking about the challenges and sometimes the seemingly insurmountable problems that are facing our local and global communities with gun violence. But I wanted to hear a little bit about and have a conversation around potential solutions that some of you who have been thinking about these issues a lot might have. So I wanted to first go to um, Tallwood in Virginia and ask, do you agree with how gun violence is being handled in your local community? And if not, why? Thanks so much. Hello. Um, I think that some things that we could do to maybe help with the violence is maybe some of the laws that have already been put on gun violence maybe be enforced a little more. Maybe things. Uh, one of the things that a process has to go through is a background check. Maybe background checks can be looked at a little more thoroughly, should be a little um, more strict. And I think also, or we think that um, mental illness should really be taken accountable in this issue because a lot of the times the people that perform these mass crimes have a history of mental illness and this should really be taken into consideration when people go out and buy guns or apply to buy guns. Thank you. Great. Great. Thanks so much. In that response you're referring to background checks, having checks on citizens, private citizens that are interested in buying guns and assuring we know who is buying them and that I know is a big debate in the United States right now. I wanted to switch over to SYLI in Somalia and ask what do you think about this and do you agree? And what could be potential youth responses around these issues? Thanks so much. And first, my name is Nasra, and I would like to greet all participants. So uh, we can control it. Uh, we can control in gun violence, encourage and give people listening to be aware of such and to increase the industry that are exporting them. That's it. Um, I know what Nasra just said is that uh, uh, she has two solutions for this uh, issue. Number one is to impose laws on importing uh, guns. Uh, and uh, number two is actually to provide license uh, to people who are responsible people who want to carry guns. Because most of the time we have seen uh, people who don't have guns and they are not responsible. They borrow guns from cousins, from friends, and use it to kill uh, other people. So uh, putting license uh, uh, is one of the solutions for Somalia. I don't know if it's for other countries. Uh, another uh, colleague want to add something? Uh, yes. And the other, the other suggestion which I would like to, to propose is to, to make a greater conversation between the youths in the world in order to have lessons, uh, suggestions, and information sharing about the violences and occurring in the world, and to share experiences that uh, concern about the violences and the peace around the world. Thank you very much. Wonderful, thanks so much. And pieces of what you said really speak to the whole purpose of our conversation today. Really sharing information, sharing ideas, and really connecting in that way around this issue. I wanted to take a moment to take a question from our online audience, where Tomer Barax writes, what can you do in order to reduce the use of guns in your community? And I wanted to first pose the question to Peace in Pakistan, and then immediately go to Ketchum 
at Roy, at Roy C. Ketchum in New York. So once again, first, peace in Pakistan. What can you do as youth in order to reduce the use of guns in your community? Thanks so much. Hello, this is Hassan. And as my perspective, I'm, I, as I'm a youth, and I'm also a part, as a volunteer, I will raise awareness in my community that stop the gun violence and stop buying the guns. Because most of times, the, the intention of people are not good. There's most of the time they are very much angry on anyone that they can do gun violence. But if there is no gun, if they have no gun, they do not buy the gun, then how can do they do gun violence? And there must be a restriction on the limit of the people. That which person need to which person need to get, have the gun? And as a youth, I also I just raise awareness in my community, in my village, with the people. Thank you. Hi, this is Rahul Abid. Uh, first of all, I would like to advise that uh, if we help our policy changes in securing weapons, and if we express our support to these local police officers and respond responders who stand first in the harm's way uh, to meet the challenges, and these moreover these pro professionals who are running these campaigns, we help them and we meet and they need our courage and they need our care to meet these challenges and if we pay more attention to these kinds of problems and we give them in hand in hand so then it could be possible that so then it could be possible that we can stop gun violence and can spread peace everywhere thank you hello it's me Mushmu. i'm from pakistan and as being a youth, I can only raise awareness in my community. And as being a volunteer, I can raise awareness and I can spread this my message to the students uh, belong to different areas. And as being a youth, I have not much authority to control gun violence, but I just want to advise to the people around the globe that they should join hands with the government. And also, I want to advise to everyone that they should not, they should not, uh, they should not increase gun violence. They should not increase the amount of gun violence because gun violence is already present in the world in a great amount. So it should be stopped, and we should, uh, we should follow our policies and rules. And I, how much I know that there are the policies and laws of, to control gun violence in every state in every country. But they are not truly in practice how much they should be. So I just want to advise that the rules and the policy that we have made to control gun violence should be practiced in a true manner, how much they should be. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kayla Ray, and I think the first step in reducing the amount of gun violence within the community is to get everyone more informed on the issue. Um, doing things like this uh, allows us to see that it's really a, a worldwide issue and it's not just um, here and there within the country, it's within the whole world. And um, of course with the huge issue of having the gun control and without guns then there can't be any gun violence, I think a big part of it too is the mental health um, uh, uh, part of it and that um, it's not just uh, the weapon it's more of the people that are participating in these acts and there can be some serious mental illnesses that are uh, people are suffering with that we're not aware of and we're not helping them which then they will end up doing um, dangerous acts like this killing people mm -hmm. which is not we do not want that so if we're more aware of mental illnesses from the start and people and help them before they do things like this we can help reduce the violence within our community and the world thank you Hi, I'm AJ. I would also like to add that beyond going like beyond the community and informing everyone in our local community as well as in our nation, things like this chat right here helps us understand the effects of 
producing, uh, manufacturing guns in other places of the world. Like before this, I was um, unaware uh, that Somalia and Pakistan were had those feelings towards us and believed that um, one of their solutions would be to have us not manufacture and sell them guns. So due to this chat, like it's extremely enlightening, and I think that things like this inform us all, and now with more information, we can come up with even more solutions to prevent it. Thank you. Thank you so much. I wanted to pose I wanted to pose a a question to Tallwood and get and get a representative from Tallwood or as a community from Tallwood to um, pose any questions you might have to your peers at SYLI in Somalia or at Peace in Pakistan speaking to these issues that Royce Ketchum is 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 bringing up. Um, were there anything was there anything that came up for you? in the conversation, in the international conversation, that was enlightening for, for you and Talbot around new ideas that you didn't think about in regards to international experience in relation to US gun production and, gu and gun violence. So a question for, for your international peers. Thanks, Talbot. Hello. Um a question that we would like to ask um, to Peace in Somalia. Um, do you feel like your nation could be a catalyst in the in the hopes of being a leader in you know controlling this gun violence and controlling um, the issues that we have with guns? Do you feel that you could be a leader and um, take the responsibility to show other nations in your area that um, you know, violence is not the answer, especially with guns, and that um, problems that you have not only in your nation are um, being felt around internationally. Do you feel that you could be a leader in this issue and cause? Thank you. Hello. I think we would like uh, you to actually uh, repeat your question again because the transmission was very slow. And please, uh, while you repeat your question, uh, can we just repeat it very slowly so that we can hear you? No, no problem. Thank, thanks so much. So, in summary, Talbot's really speaking to leadership on this issue of gun violence and quelling and putting down some of these larger global and local ideas of gun violence um, that, we're, that we're speaking to. And the question was for peace in Pakistan. Do you see yourselves as potential leaders or youth leaders in this fight against gun violence? Thanks so much. Just one, let's just take one or two representatives from peace in Pakistan to speak to that. Thanks so much. Uh, our question was directed to uh, the school in Somalia, uh, and but if Pakistan would like to enlighten us with their experience too, then we would love that. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks so much. So let's take one one representative from each school. First, we'll start with SYLI. If you feel like you have an opportunity to be a youth leader in this fight against gun violence, and then we'll go right over to Peace in Pakistan for a representative to speak to youth leadership around the fight against gun violence. Thanks so much.
Sorry, I would like to say it's like uh, we didn't get the question exactly what they mean, but like uh, if it is uh, for us as a SYLI, please repeat them. Re sorry, let them repeat. Them. Sure, no problem. So the question for SYLI was, do you see what role do you see yourselves as youth leaders in the global fight against gun violence? Thanks so much. Uh, hello, and certainly, yes, we believe that we can be, um, because the SYLI is for eradicating and reducing the risks um, in the community. So we believe we have a good uh, intention and concern about reducing and eliminating everything which can be the social damage, which can which can cause a social social damage damage, and it can be a social problem. So certainly, yes, we can. We believe that we are. Thank you. Uh, I would like to include what uh, my friend said that uh, as uh, this group of uh, presenters, I believe that uh, yes, as a youth, we can to like we can change like a whole country. If we are serious, and uh, there's nothing that is uh, impossible in life. Thank you. Thanks so much, and I'd love to hear just from one representative from from peace in Pakistan. Actually, these are all wonderful comments, but I'm looking at the time, and I just want to make sure that we're we're noting everyone who's calling in and dialing in. And since we're only a few minutes from the end, I want to thank SYLI for that comment. I think it's indicative and representative of all of all our all our comments and thoughts around how we can combat gun violence. I want to acknowledge a comment from Nahida in Afghanistan that really speaks to speaks to a lot of this. Nahida says, I hear so many things about Somalia, but I don't believe until I get to know someone from there and hear from them. I think this is a wonderful and really powerful statement to conclude our hour here together. And I wanted to thank all our participants from the United States, from Somalia and Pakistan, as well as all of our online viewers. And for those of you who'd like to get more involved with some of the organizations we're hearing about today, you can visit CARE's website at www.care.org to learn more about the amazing youth leadership initiative that's empowering youth and allowing their voices to be heard not only in Somalia but worldwide. I also wanted to give a huge big thanks to Google Connected Classrooms and all the schools connecting with us online. And of course, I want to re reiterate my gratitude to the amazing participants from Royce Ketchum in New York, Tallwood High School in Virginia Beach, as well as SYLI in Garway, Somalia, as well as Peace Pakistan. I, I truly believe that all of you have demonstrated that you refuse to accept gun violence as the status quo and are committed to being change makers in your communities. I'm hearing it. I'm seeing you play it out in all your experiences day to day. And I think all of you, our four participating schools, and everyone that has tuned in is really engaged in this conversation. And it's the next generation and the young people and the conversations we've heard today that will really make the difference. So I wanted to thank everyone. And with that, our four participating schools, on the count of three, I want you all to unmute your microphones and give a big goodbye and thank you. And remember to connect on Global Nomads Group Google, Google Plus page, and you can continue this conversation. So on the count of three, one, two, three. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.